Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the HP for All final conference. Hope uh, uh, everything is okay with all of you, the both uh, in presence and the ones connected online. Uh, if uh, there's a problem somehow, please write it on the chat so we can try to uh, solve it. Um, a few instructions before we start. Uh, please uh, keep yourself muted so uh, we cannot uh, hear you unless you would like to ask uh, something uh, in uh, the session we have prepared for you in questions uh, and answers. Um, I will leave now the floor to my colleagues uh, speaking and uh, welcome you officially to this uh, final event. Um, Carlos um, is uh, the one responsible for the Spanish pilot. He will be uh, leading um, the conversations later for the policy recommendations, but he will be uh, officially welcome you because he's our officially uh, guest. And then we have uh, Joaquin uh, also welcome you and uh, speaking about uh, the situation uh, of the heat pumps uh, more in Spain. And then you will have a, a lot of um, conversations uh, today, uh, focus on uh, the situation of the heat pumps all over Europe, the policies uh, and so. So we hopefully uh, wait for you to be with us uh, the whole uh, day. And uh, well, uh, I leave the floor now to my colleagues and hope you enjoy uh, the, the event. If you would like to be uh, stand up or you, you prefer. Thanks. Thanks, Mariana. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, apologize uh, because uh, our uh, chief executive officer has uh, just gone down with flu and uh, he has tried to uh, attend the meeting, but uh, in the end it has not been uh, possible. So, uh, first of all, uh, apologies from uh, his side. Uh, second, uh, welcome again uh, to uh, everybody. Uh, for us, it's, uh, we, are, we, are, we are proud to to, to host this uh, HP for All uh, final uh, conference. Uh, as many of you know, uh, this project is closely linked with high-level uh, European Union uh, policy uh, initiatives in the context of the decarbonization of the uh, EU uh, economy and also in the context of the uh, recent uh, crisis with uh, the uh, Ukrainian war. Uh, this uh, project uh, is uh, set to uh, forward uh, a package of tools and also a set of uh, recommendations to uh, help uh, decision makers at all levels, uh, both at uh, EU level but also at regional and even local level, uh, to uh, deploy the uh, necessary strategies and pathways to uh, increase significantly uh, the offer and the demand of qualified professionals for the heat pump sector, which will be a uh, key in the coming years uh, to uh, facilitate this actual deployment of this uh, urgently needed uh, technology. Uh, uh, I'm also uh, honored to, to uh, have uh, beside me uh, Mr. Uh, Joaquin Villar, which is uh, Chief of, uh, head, head of Department of Planning and International Relationship uh, within the uh, Andalusian uh, Energy Agency. I will pass on to him uh, my uh, micro just in a, a few seconds. Uh, uh, he will uh, underline the uh, importance that also uh, heat pumps uh, feature in the uh, expected regional uh, strategy for the coming years. And uh, uh, they are also closely uh, involved in a number of EU projects. Uh, within energy policy, and in this sense, they are also uh, quite uh, interested and they have been following closely the uh, development of this uh, project. So, uh, Joaquin, it's a pleasure to, to have you on board. Thank you, Carlos. Um, yes, I, I would like to thank you for the invitation to today. And it's a pleasure for me to be in the final event of this uh, project. And but I would like to to show you some figures about uh, the the energy policy in in Andalusia. First, I would like to say that Andalusia has a very great potential of renewable energy. More than five uh, fifty percent of the uh, electricity uh, come from renewables. Um, 
this uh, we have achieved a, a decrease the reduction of CO2 uh, emission associated with the electricity generation. That is quite important for us. But the potential is even higher than this. We have studies saying that the, the renewable potential in Andalusia is more than 300,000 megawatts. That is three times the total capacity electricity of Spain. So we have this big potential and our objective is to achieve uh, these uh, figures. And for this, uh, we have a very strong uh, political commitment uh, in the year 2021, we applied the Andalusia Energy Guidelines uh, that set the, the, policy, the policy lines to improve the energy efficiency, the renewable energy, the infrastructure, that is quite important also, uh, to, uh, to draw the, the scenario for 2030. We, we like to say the Green Revolution in, in Andalusia. Uh, the green sovereignty uh, in Andalusia, and for this is necessary, as I mentioned, a, a key point is the strong political commitment. Last year, last summer, we approved the energy strategy uh, 2013, where it's a document and strategy uh, where we set up uh, the energy objectives for Andalusia for the next uh, 10 years. Uh, these strategic lines uh, defining the Andalusia energy guidelines uh, now is uh, materialized in concrete actions. So we will have a very strong development, uh, development of the energy sector in Andalusia. We hope to have this uh, for the coming years. Uh, but we are today uh, here for talking about heat pans. And heat pan is also quite important uh, for us for a lot of reasons. First, we can talk about the construction sector that is quite linked to heat pans. The construction sector is uh, quite important in, in Andalusia, it's a pillar of Andalusia, uh, not only considering the impact on energy, but also considering the impact on economic. Uh, there are a lot of companies involved in the construction sector. So we have been pushing the, this sector through this year, uh, through different measures. Uh, uh, we have established uh, new financial uh, instruments, uh, a new incentive scheme, try to simplify the, the administrative procedures uh, to facilitate the access to this incentive to more population. We are also very interested in the professionalization of the sector, and this is uh, also, I think, a key element of this project. The innovation and the internationalization. Uh, we have been leading an, a partnership uh, at the European level with more than 15 regions involved try to foster uh, the synergies between regions, uh, pushing the innovation, the collaboration between these regions, as uh, you, you have already done in this project. Uh, and I would like also to highlight uh, uh, the measures implemented in the public administration. Uh, here in Andalusia, we have more than 5,000 public buildings. And in order to manage all this energy consumption of this building, we have set up a, a, a new entity called Redeja, that centralized the energy consumption of the whole uh, Junta Andalusia. And this uh, entity has achieved uh, uh, energy saving of more, of more than 12% every year. That is a huge amount of uh, energy saving. And this, uh, we could say that this long strategy um, has been recognized by the European Commission. Uh, uh, last summer, we received uh, the Registrar Award. Registrar is an initiative from the European Commission that recognized the best or more innovative uh, initiatives using European funds. So uh, for us, it was a very good recognition to this very long strategy on, on uh, sustainable construction. And this is because also construction is a key pillar in Europe. Mm. Uh, you know, there are several programs running as the renovation waves that hope, uh, expect to renovate more than 3 million, Euro, uh, 3 million buildings in the next uh, uh, 10 years. And more recently, uh, Carlos commented, the, the Repower Plan. The Repower Plan uh, has a specific measure for heat pans, uh, doubling the rate of individual heat pans. 
10 million uh, of units in, in the next five years. So it's a very, very uh, hard objective. But and, uh, the thing that we see in Andalusia is that it's a very, very big opportunity for us. Why? Uh, as, I, as we were discussing earlier, that we have uh, a good opportunity for the industrial side, industrial side, uh, we have here Afar, that is the one of the main cluster uh, for sure in 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 Spain. We have uh, the possibility to uh, more industrial development on this on on uh, taking this opportunity coming from from Europe, and we have a very well structured sector around uh, Afar. But also we have another elements. As I mentioned, we have uh, the political commitment with energy strategies uh, uh, that want to achieve a very ambitious objective of energy saving and heat pan is part of this objective. We have different elements as uh, the incentive scheme, new financial instrument and so on. And with this element, we, we will try to push uh, the market uh, to incorporate uh, heat pans. So, in conclusion, um, our institution, the Andalusia Energy Agency, is at your complete disposal uh, to uh, go through this way uh, that Europe has set up uh, to support uh, in, uh, the, the, the result of this project. I was commenting, Carlos, that now we are in process of, uh, of drafting the new energy plan for the next three years and um, for sure the conclusion the policy roadmap that you have elaborated will be a very uh, good input for for designing this new energy plan for the next three years so thank you very much and i hope uh, you have a very successful journey thank you Thank you so much, uh, Joaquin, for the presence of the uh, Andalusian Energy Agency. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm uh, really happy to, to hear that these uh, conclusions will be useful also for uh, regional policy making. Okay, now let's give the floor. Thank you very much, both. Uh, we will now connect remotely with um, Paula Ray Garcia. She's uh, deputy head of uh, UNIT at European Commission. Director General for Energy, uh, Paula, the floor is yours. Yes, good morning. I hope that you can hear me well. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Okay, no, so thank you very much and uh, really a pleasure to, to join you today. And um, also thanks for the possibility to, to let me connect virtually because it's really um, the that, I'm sorry. C can you still hear me? Yes, Paula, we can hear you perfectly. Paula, you are Does muted. Work now? now we can hear you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. No. So let's hope that the yeah the technical system uh, accompanies me and I can make the the presentation. So um, yeah, a really very relevant um, topic and, and project, and really very central to our objectives now um, at the European level. As it was already mentioned by the previous speaker. And in particular, with what we are planning now for 2023. So, if we move to the next slide, please. Yes. So, um, already uh, in 2020, uh, we have set, as it was mentioned, uh, really a very important objective of the European Green Deal uh, put on buildings and on the renovation. And that is really a transformation that, uh, that we need of the sector. So uh, if we are to meet our uh, climate targets and, and to deliver really on the decrease of greenhouse gas emissions that is needed for that, the, the building sector and there in particular heating and cooling of buildings needs to go through a fundamental transformation. And that of course um, requires um, 
the advancement of, of uh, energy efficiency and renewable technologies for heating, but it also requires that we have the relevant workforce, the relevant uh, experts, uh, installers, engineers that uh, really can uh, make this happen on the ground. So uh, it is expected that this push for renovation will, will create uh, jobs, uh, but it also has attached a, a need, uh, let's say, for improving the, the skills in that area, for making sure that the skills are really aligned with the needs of, of this transformation, and that there is a sufficient workforce also across all member states, because um, the challenge is, is very large and is uh, very large across all member states. So if we move to the next slide, please. So it was mentioned already also the context, of course, of, of the energy uh, crisis and of uh, the war in Ukraine. And there, uh, what the Commission put forward was the Repower EU um, strategy, which aims really to, to reduce how much we rely on, on fossil fuels, and of course, in particular, fossil fuels from, from Russia. So there are the angles uh, on which we are acting are, are uh, several uh, to be able to address this big, um, this big change, let's say, of reliance on, on fossil fuels and on imports into the EU. And um, on the demand side, it really requires um, reducing demand, accelerating the, the clean energy transition, and then diversifying, of course, the, the energy sources that we have. And um, on the demand side, um, it is very clear that uh, we need uh, really uh, to address again buildings and heating because 55% of, of the fuels that are uh, imported and consumed uh, are really uh, consumed in buildings and mostly for heating. And therefore here, uh, we really need to push in parallel for um, energy efficiency in buildings, but also for the deployment of heat pumps and of solar energy, both are really very central to repower. So um, in the repower strategy, uh, we have a reinforcement of, of the legislation, for instance, of uh, the energy efficiency directive, renewable directive. So let's say the overall targets that set the ambition for action at EU level in, in those fields. But there is also um, a clear target for uh, doubling, let's say, current deployment rates of, of heat pumps. So um, it's clear that uh, both deliver on the on the Green Deal and on the increased climate target, but also to make sure that we reduce our reliance on, on fossil fuels and uh, imports uh, from Russia, that there needs to be a very uh, substantial acceleration of, of the deployment of, of heat pumps. So if we move to the next uh, slide, please. So um, there, uh, it requires certainly that we look at the issue of heating also in, in a system uh, approach with a system uh, perspective, uh, because um, the expertise requires not only um, technicians, for instance, that uh, know how to install a heat pump, but they also need to make sure that um, that the whole heating system is really adjusted uh, and really the cost efficiency of, of this change is, is maximized. Um, so here it is very important that we have a sufficient workforce with the relevant skills um, to make sure that um, there is a match really in the, in between supply and demand and that we also use this as an opportunity because of course this is a sector which has a very important European basis and um, is uh, a sector where there is still a very substantial uh, manufacturing in the EU and uh, we are at a moment where uh, we would really need to be replacing a very uh, large number of, of fossil fuel based uh, heating units and that's really the occasion for replacing those uh, by uh, by heat pumps or, or if, if in some cases um, possible also, um, for instance, district heating and cooling or, or other local solutions. But definitely, this requires a um, very important effort uh, on the skill side. So if we move to the to the next slide, please. 
So here, what we have uh, been um, hearing from, from industry in particular is that, in fact, the uh, skills are really um, an area where there are significant bottlenecks. Um, there is a need really for uh, many more installers if we are to deliver on, on our current uh, policy targets. And also there is a need for uh, reskilling installers uh, to be able uh, to work in particular with, with heat pumps. So um, here uh, there is also the question of the, of the refrigerants that are used in heat pumps, the move towards more climate friendly refrigerants, then of course the consideration of, of the system and of the building as a whole, which uh, is very important because as mentioned, there are really cost effectiveness gains that uh, could be maximized uh, with the right expertise. And um, this uh, fits into, let's say, a, a broader gap in the building sector overall because of uh, the, the focus that we have now of uh, many uh, funding programs that uh, really prioritize the building sector. Um, and this requires uh, really an increase of the number of, of professionals that uh, would need really to be, um, let's say, redeployed and upskilled to uh, be able to work in this area. So if we move to the next slide, please. So um, here, and that's why I was uh, mentioning also the work that we will be doing now in 2023. Um, so uh, we are now in the process of, of uh, launching an, an action plan, the preparation of an action plan um, to be ready by the end of this year um, to, let's say, um, boost the heat pump uh, sector in a way that uh, will allow us to, to meet the, the targets in, in Repower EU and also in the Green Deal. So um, from our initial, let's say, uh, work with the stakeholders, what we have seen is that there are several areas on which we would need to, to act at the same time. On the one hand, really on bringing the sector together with member states and also with the Commission, because of course this also connects very much um, to the work on industrial policy, where uh, member states really need to be engaged as they are very much in, in the lead on, on what to prioritize and, and how. Um, a second area where we see that there is a lot of, uh, of uh, gaps, let's say, to, to be covered has to do with understanding uh, this uh, technology, what are heat pumps, uh, what do they offer, what are the different types, how best to adjust them uh, to the different, uh, let's say, typologies of buildings and of areas. Um, and here uh, we would really need to, to see how to make this um, attractive and understandable so that citizens also engage into, into this uh, on the demand side. And um, this could go hand in hand with this effort on, on the skills angle, which as, as mentioned, is really one of the main gaps that we see that uh, requires addressing uh, with this action plan. On the legislative side, in fact, um, this action plan, the preparation of this action plan all throughout 2023 would go in parallel to what we are doing, uh, let's say, on the Fit for 55 uh, legislative provisions or the revisions of all the energy and climate legislation to be ready for the 55% uh, climate objective. But it also goes hand in hand and in parallel to the work on eco design and energy labeling, which is focusing very much this year on heating and cooling appliances. So um, revising the eco-design requirements for heating and cooling appliances, including heat pumps, and also um, working on the revision of, of the energy label for those appliances so that we can really compare much better the different types of products and uh, show really the advantages of, of heat pumps in a way that is much uh, clearer also to citizens. And finally, the, the last angle on which uh, we are um, now uh, starting to work uh, more systematically as part of, of the preparation of this plan is really on, on the financing aspects because um, the carbonization of buildings, building renovation, heat pumps, renewables, um, local renewables and renewables in, in buildings are really um, quite central to many financing programs already today but not all these possibilities are always well known. 
And there is also the idea of bringing much more, um, let's say, uh, the sector and the investors um, into, into the picture so that uh, this area can also attract uh, private financing at, at a much more scale and be made more, more accessible. So um, here, uh, as part of, of this work, um, we really want to, to have a very uh, broad and um, in-depth, let's say, engagement with the stakeholders. So not only the installers and the industry, as I was mentioning, but really um, national and, and uh, regional authorities working on training, working on education, because um, this is an area that, of course, is, is really in the hands of, of the member states, everything that has to do with education. There is no, let's say, EU harmonized uh, legal basis, but um, this does not mean that there are no common elements that could possibly um, benefit different uh, member states, different national and regional authorities, that there could not be more standardization, uh, preparation of, let's say, uh, modular uh, training schemes that could be then replicated in different uh, in different um, areas and uh, that could advance really and, and accompany and facilitate all this effort on the on the skill side. So um, there we are also working very closely with other DGs. So uh, my DG, DG Energy, but also with. Uh, colleagues responsible for employment, also for industrial policy, uh, for education, so that we can also see how best um, to use the different uh, setups that we have already in place to engage with, with member states and with uh, national and, and regional authorities. And in fact, uh, uh, organizations like the ones that are, are present today are, are very much um, a focus, let's say, of, of our attention in, in this work on, on heat pumps and on, on skills. So um, there are uh, also these uh, skills angle, um, one effort and, and one area where we really need a, a lot of contribution is on how to make sure that we have practical solutions, let's say, to, to overcome uh, all the challenges that we have been on, on availability of workforce, um, but also, let's say, the variety of training and, and qualification requirements that uh, prevents the mobility of workers that limits also uh, economies of scale, let's say, in, in training the workforce in a, in a technology that in the end is, is a product that is also moving across the, the internal market. And therefore, there could be really benefits in, in having a more workforce availability that also is capable of crossing borders, let's say. And that uh, we also have uh, more visible, let's say, and more attractive the, the construction sector um, to make sure that we can have, let's say, the increasing workforce that this sector will require now uh, to be able to deliver on the on the challenges of, of the Green Deal and of uh, Repower EU. So I think these are a bit um, the, the couple of elements that I would mention as, as introduction from my side. And um, with this, uh, just to really uh, wish you a very, a very successful um, event and, and looking forward to, to your contributions to this work that we are launching now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paula. I uh, pity uh, for not uh, having you present today with us, but uh, we really thank you uh, to be able to connect remotely with us. Uh, now we will leave the floor to our next uh, speaker, uh, his Dan Stefanica. He uh, will present the heat pumps uh, market and trends in the European Union, uh, its impact uh, on high quality employment, and uh, he will develop further now. So, uh, Dan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Richard. Oh, very easy, it's only one button, eh? <laughs> so good morning, thank you for the introduction, Mariana. Uh, as was, sa was said, I work for the European Heat Pump Association, so we are really, really busy these days. Eh? We've been busy for the last months, but uh, I think a lot of work is going to happen in the, in the following years as well. Uh, what I'm showing you here is that, uh, well, we're very happy with this picture. Eh? 
from Repower EU, for the first time, uh, heat pumps are there in the picture. This has made us very happy, along with photovoltaic, wind, and storage. So the recognition that our sector has nowadays is, is really impressive. We have come a long way. Um, this is the uh, this is basically the the ambition um, that needs to happen in the next years. Basically, is double digit growth all the way. Um, as you can see, the until 2030, uh, that's the time horizon of Repower EU. Um, this means that uh, heat pumps need need to double their installation, manufacturing needs to double, and then they need to double again. And I'm not talking about what happens after 2031, by the way, but as you can imagine, they probably need to double or triple again. Now, uh, this, based on our market report, shows you the, the growth that is, that is happening. The previous slide were estimations on where we need to be. This is what actually is happening. Uh, as you can see, uh, basically we had double-digit growth in the last years, and quite a bit of acceleration in 2021 and 2022, the estimate. Uh, there are countries that are installing basically over 100% more heat pumps than they were before. Um, there, there are really countries that, that are at the forefront of the energy transition, and it's everywhere in Europe. So we expect very, very uh, large numbers for, for this year uh, from the estimations that we've, uh, we've been receiving from the heat pump associations of different countries. Um, just an example of what happens with sanitary hot water, and you can see the growth. This is very easy to understand. And you can see from 2021, which were 245,000, uh, and now in 2022, the estimation is 300 and close to 15,000. Uh, by the way, this data comes from our market report that we gather from our national heat pump associations, and we do not have heat pump associations to gather data from in all uh, European Union countries, let alone all geographic Europe. So what we're talking about here are just the, the data that we collect as a Europe geographic, geographically as a whole, the numbers would be quite higher. Uh, sales by country, uh, you can see here which countries are at the forefront of installations of heat pumps. Uh, you can see the top three that basically account for 50% of the market. Uh, this, of course, also has to do with how big the countries are, of course. Uh, these, but uh, we still need to consider how many boilers are installed every year. Uh, as you can see in the numbers, there are uh, the last graph, 2021, is actually 7 million boilers have been installed in 2021 and 1.9 million heat pumps. Uh, of course, trying to get to a 50-50% by uh, 2030. But again, the, the numbers, uh, although they're growing, as you can see, the, the boilers are, st are staying steady and they have quite a large margin uh, over the heat pump numbers. Uh, so what is the industry doing to prepare for this? Uh, basically, a lot of investment. These are the ones, some of the investments that have been made public. Uh, more than 5 billion euros have been announced to be invested. Um, I've, there was a period where every week uh, there was a, quite a big investment uh, announced. And I'm sure that more of them will be announced soon. This is basically to keep up with demand. Uh, manufacturers um, are pretty much flat on uh, working to, to build the heat pumps. So they're now investing into developing uh, new assembly lines, new assembly lines next to the assembly lines they have, or actually looking for economic opportunities in other countries uh, to, to open up new uh, manufacturing capabilities. As uh, we have uh, regional policy uh, representatives here, this is a great opportunity to basically get uh, a big economic player to your region. And as you can imagine, having a big heat pump manufacturer in your region with all the other uh, small companies that are supporting that would probably uh, give you a big economic growth as well as offer quite a big, uh, quite a big number of 
of highly specialized, well-paying jobs. Um, again, you've seen the numbers of how, uh, how much the heat pumps need to grow. People are building those heat pumps, highly skilled people. Uh, and a lot of them are built, of course, in Europe with European technologies. And there's a lot of manufacturing capabilities here, only set to increase. So uh, be on the lookout for these investments. I'm sure they will, they will grow. But of course, uh, because I was asked a few days ago, this will take time. I mean, once you say we will invest 1 billion euros in something, it's not like you can just open the factory in four weeks, right? Uh, and because we're talking about skills here, there's also a need to think about the skills of the people actually building the factory. So it's all along the value chain of making this happen. And it will be a, a tremendous effort especially since the other renewable energy technologies and supporting technologies are also uh, quite, um, uh, let's say they're trying to attract the same, um, the same people and uh, the pool of people to attract is not very, very high. Um, yeah, just a few, just a few recommendations that we have as part of the SPA because we, we we do a lot of policy. So basically, just to take a look into the electricity and fossil fuel taxation, uh, when electricity and especially green electricity is taxed more than uh, fossil fuel gas from uh, well countries outside of the European Union, that might be a problem. Eh? Um, subsidies because uh, the upfront cost of heat pump heat pumps and other technologies or even renovating your house might be a bit a bit uh, discouraging so you need a bit of support especially in the beginning um, new business models and i'm sure you're aware of that because we all uh, work on a lot of european union projects that have a business model component to it um, simplification of administrative procedures of course of course when you try to make a borehole next to your house. You want to do it as easy and as less bureaucratic as possible. Uh, end user support, uh, one-stop shops, and I'm sure that uh, our partners at TUS and uh, uh, that we're managing another project together know about those. Uh, but the end user needs a lot of support. There's, there's a lot of, um, a lot of, we ask them a lot of things and we should help them as much as possible. Um, something that we we are concentrating right now as EHPA, and we've been pitching this to to uh, to the policymakers, to our members, uh, to the other associations that we do deal with, is basically a heat pump accelerator. And the fourth, it's just five parts. The fourth part is basically the focus on skills. Um, again, this is tremendous growth. Uh, this is unprecedented. And um, basically, we need to look at everything. And there needs to be an acceler well, there needs to be an accelerator to the accelerator in the state that we're we're in now, uh, to make the the policy asks happen. Uh, so, what does this mean for the value chain? Basically, like we said, new factories, and these will take some time to 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 come online. Um, more installers as you can imagine uh that's it's basically no way of getting around that and i'm, I'm pretty sure we all agree here that uh, being an installer is quite a great job nowadays um new skills descriptions for installers basically you know uh you need to connect it to the to the to the photovoltaic uh panels you need to connect it to batteries nowadays uh, you need to have very good communication skills to communicate with your uh, with your clients um new skill descriptions for a heat pump fitter a person that just installs but does not need design skills that's just something that that we might consider as well uh we have to look at you know skilling reskilling people um attracting the new generation into into these types of jobs but also we need to look into how actually to make the installation process as easy and as effective as possible imagine cutting down the installation time by 50 percent that means uh, rather than installing two heat pumps you can install three uh, again it, it needs a holistic approach uh, yeah like we said we need all hands on deck for this uh, there's no more, you cannot actually stand, uh, stand back anymore because probably if you're, uh, if you're a heat pump manufacturer or any 
any place along the value chain, you need to make an investment that uh, pretty much takes into account the competition as well. Um, with great funds and great opportunities comes uh, also great competition for them. Eh? Uh, and like we said, we need this heat pump accelerator or an accelerator for this accelerator, but we need to get the things done as quickly as possible. And uh, well, you are here, so basically you know what we're talking about. If not, please get in contact with EHP or the other partners of the project. And I'm pretty sure we can, uh, we can steer you in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you very much for this interesting presentation. I think maybe you are all wondering right now, how does uh, HP for All provide solutions to the scenario uh, that already presented? So the next uh, presentation will try to solve uh, some of those uh, questions for you. Uh, we have our project coordinator, Patrick O'Reilly. Uh, so I will leave the floor to him to develop further and explain how HP for All can help all those uh, skills, uh, uh, lack of uh, skills, and uh, the, the problems we are uh, facing right now with uh, heat pumps. So please go. Thank you, Mariana. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for all attending today here in person and online. It's a great privilege to to have been part of this team, to, to lead this team uh, with my colleague Stephen here from Tooth and our, our colleagues back home um, who supported us, but also a great consortium um, of really, you know, um, uh, top class partners who, who all contributed in different ways um, and will continue as in the last couple of months of this project. Um, I'd also like to welcome today our colleagues from the European Commission, from GG Energy, and in particular our uh, coordinator, our project officer, Luca Angelino. Um, I'll just give a quick summary of the overall project. Um, some of my colleagues will go into more detail as the, the morning progresses and, and the various aspects of the project. But as, as Dan has just mentioned, and also our earlier speaker, about the, the huge, unique moment, let's say, that the heat pump industry finds itself in. And you know, when this project was conceived, uh, there was already high expectation for the, the growth in heat pumps. But that has now gone uh, you know, and, and doubled again. So. Every manufacturer probably around Europe is in some form of expansion at the moment, uh, finding challenges with building new factories or finding skilled workers uh, dealing with supply chain issues. So the, there's a huge um, upheaval taking place. And you know one of the really, I suppose, the key objective of this project was within all of that to keep a really clear focus on the, 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 the critical point, which is that when heat pumps go into a building, whether it's a residential building or a large commercial factory, um, it's quite a new system compared to what people are used to. Fossil fuel systems had, had a way of being designed and being installed and looked after. Um, heat pumps require a different set of skills, very complementary skills. Some of them are the same skills, but they're, it's, um, it's really important that the the design, the installation, the, the operation is handled on an ongoing basis very carefully because the, the potential downside is that we, we don't achieve the efficiencies that are fundamental to the exploitation of heat pumps and the, the potential for energy efficiency, reduced energy consumption and, and hence carbon reduction that uh, they, they offer. So with, the, with that in mind, the Heat Pump for All project has set out to to put a really clear focus on developing skills within the, the entire value chain, and then making sure that those who are going to make use of those skills are the, the building owners, the people who are going to invest in heat pumps, that they are aware that they are aware of those skills that they that they need to demand from the sector. Uh, the, the the objectives of the project can be summarized. I suppose the the, the first one there is is key in the sense that. This is essentially about skills, so the design and development of a, a heat pump skills and competency framework has been one of the key um, outcomes of this. Um, in addition to that, then, we have had very intensive pilot activities in three regions, in Ireland, in Upper Austria, and here in Andalusia, <coughs> where we have gone out into the, the marketplace to support end users and clients to 
to, to help them to realize what they need to look for from their professionals. Um, we've, we've also, in, in each of those regions, looked at the training courses that are on offer. Uh, we've brought additional training that we've developed during the course of this project, but we've uh, you know, signposted training that's already available and tried to create linkages between different training providers and, their, and, and I suppose shine a light on policy developments that are happening in each region. And then uh, we, we also have reached out into other regions within the EU, so each pilot region was partnered up with a, an observer region. Um, so it's, it's great to be able to welcome today our colleagues from the University of Zagreb uh, with Professor Vladimir Soldo and Luca Boban. So thank you very much for attending today. I think online we have um, Ian Gagano from the energy, he's an energy consultant in Bucharest in Romania. So welcome Ian. Uh, sorry you couldn't be here. Um, and I know also that Carlos and his team have had extensive um, interactions with different stakeholders and observers in, in Portugal. So I suppose the, 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 this, this is just a kind of a representation of, of the, the value chain or as we see and as, as we have approached it within the project, I mean the building owner is the start and the, and the finish of the, of the story. They, they are the people who make the decision to invest in a heat pump. Um, for it, before there was such a great focus placed on, I mean, we have the, we have the look on site, there are energy efficiency benefits, which will lead to cost reduction so that after a period of six, seven years, th their system has paid itself off compared to a fossil fuel system and they are, they have a, a lower running cost. But obviously there's the more macro situation where the, the, the greater electrification of heat and it's easier to, to make our energy source um, re renewable. So the building owner will, will s has, I suppose the, the relationship with the manufacturer or, or really with the brand, with the product is, is, is key because um, they, they, every manufacturer has a slightly different way of designing a control system, a, a, a way that they would like their heat pump to be deployed uh, in a building. So um, every, every system is slightly different uh, and they, the, the, the design process then has to really be fine-tuned for that product, for, for, from that manufacturer. The installer is hopefully a, a key part of that process, but of course we can have installers who are not designers. We also have to face the fact that, you know, five years after a heat pump is installed, it could be possible that the installer is no longer working in this area, so another installer needs to come in and support the end user. So. We think that the, the relationship between the, the building owner and the manufacturer or the manufacturer's representative is really important because the manufacturer will need to support their brand. You know, they need to make sure their brand is uh, not being damaged by you know, bad reputation. So ultimately, the, I suppose there is a responsibility on manufacturers to ensure that their product is going out into the marketplace and being supported in the long term because the building owner is making a decision over a 15 to 20 year period. They want their system to last that long. Um, the investment has to you know, work out over that period of time. So, uh, you know, and another key aspect of this is the, is the after sales. It comes back to the building owner then that when the system has been designed and installed that they are fully you know, competent to operate the system, to maybe make whatever slight adjustments are going to be within their remit to make. Um, that they are not, it's not something that they are afraid of, that they don't go near and that they, they just say, well, I was told to not touch that. I mean, that, that's not a, a good relationship between a building owner and a heat pump. They need to, to be um, in charge of it. So the, um, we've, we have set out to try and address all of these um, in different ways in, in our different pilot regions. Uh, and the, even from the very from very large heat pumps down to you know small four three four five kilowatt domestic units, some of these principles are, are, are applicable in all cases. So to look then at the project, how did we roll this project out? So we, we went through initial periods of market research and we carried out intensive surveys of different end users and installers and designers, um, gathering, I suppose, a, a state of play from each of the pilot regions, but. The, the pilot activities were key to the, 
to the delivery of this project. Um, we also had, a, as I mentioned earlier, the heat pump competency framework. Another key output is the a knowledge hub, which is a, a web-based uh, information source. And we have uh, benchmarking tools developed for the three pilot regions. So just to, to look at each of those in a little bit more detail, the in Ireland, we we have um, we place the focus on mainly on the on the domestic sector because there's there's a lot of um, very high ambitious targets from our, our government based on climate action plan targets for heat pumps going into renovated buildings. Practically all new buildings have heat pumps at this stage because of the way our building regulations have been developed over the last few years, culminating in the last revision in 2019. So. In Ireland, we went out to local authorities because they are tasked with developing more and more social housing. We have a, a we have a housing crisis as well. We have a, a serious shortage of, of housing. So we felt this was a, an opportunity for us to have a larger impact because every local authority would be responsible for delivering hundreds of houses over a period of time. So if we could go into their project management teams, their engineering staff, and give them new information, new ways of thinking about how to approach heat pump projects, we, we felt we could have a, a large impact there. In Austria, in Upper Austria, uh, our colleagues there at the Upper Austrian Energy Agency focused mainly on large scale heat pump installations, working with project owners, designers, and installation companies, heat pump manufacturers of larger systems. Uh, the domestic market for heat pumps is quite mature already in Austria, so this was a, an area of, of new development with huge potential in, in, in um, industry and in businesses where there's a lot of per potential for recovering waste heat, heat that's just being lost to the atmosphere and can be recovered and, and brought back into processes. So we've um, some great case studies have, have resulted in the work then from our colleagues there. Um, and we were fortunate to visit some of those there early, late last year where um, you know heat from a, an industrial process has been recovered and then used to heat the building, um, displacing oil. You know, so this is a um, great, great potential for case studies that we can all learn from. Um, and then here in Andalusia, the focus was on the on the public housing sector. Um, I suppose on the one hand to promote greater use of heat pumps for for new buildings and heating and cooling. Um, as we were discussing earlier, there's a there's a move mo away maybe from air to air systems into hydronic systems, which is. Um, Leading to uh, you know a new a new market really. Um, there's the for existing equipment. There there you know air to air systems that might be installed a number of years may not be as efficient as more modern machines. And then the potential for using low uh, global warming potential refrigerants in 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 replacement units. So um, a huge amount of information has been gathered from these pilot activities, um, and it has all worked its way through the project to help us to develop our competency framework, to develop our knowledge hub, our, our benchmarking tools, but also um, a key output is, is um, a policy and rec policy recommendations guide, which will be of great benefit at local, national, and hopefully also at EU level. The, so the competency framework is, is there to provide information to building owners, design, heat pump designers and installers, uh, to help them along the way of, correct, of, of selecting the correct system for their building, uh, to ensure that it's designed then and installed correctly, and to foster appropriate after sales relationships uh, that maintain the efficiency over the long term. So this is kind of 15, 20 year period that the system needs to be efficient to, to, um, to, to yield the best results. The, the Knowledge Hub will include best practice guides, case studies, some technical reports on our, on our project work, um, procurement guides, and then some webinars and uh, that have been held to, to support the pilot activities. And then in each region, we developed a, a benchmarking tool that was specific to, I suppose, data that was available to us from the, from the regions. And the idea here is that it would be an easy to use um, web-based tool for uh, residential people, building owners and, and operators to get an understanding, a basic, uh, maybe a an easy to, to grasp understanding of you know, the fact that heat pumps use electricity. You don't have an oil or a gas bill anymore for your heating. It's going to be based on your electric, electrical bill and to give them a feel for the magnitude of how many electrical kilowatt hours per annum you, you're thinking about and what that might cost 
uh, and also to give them a feel for efficiency and seasonal performance factor. These are new terminologies that are, are critical to the understanding of peat pumps. So it's it's been a you know as I say a real pleasure to 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 have been the the, the coordinating partner of this project over the last couple of years. Um, we've we've had some really uh, you know if, if I just quickly run through the partners we have the European Heat Pump Association who have led the charge on the training and the skills development as well as giving us great access to heat pump associations and manufacturers at different stages uh, during the pro project. Um, IERC in in Cork have carried out some detailed research and been key to the development of the benchmarking tools. Uh, RENA from Italy have provided some great technical competence and, and consultancy on, on various aspects of the project. Um, sustainable Innovations uh, have, uh, thanks, thanks Mariana and Christina for organizing today's event um, and for your ongoing communications and dissemination work throughout the whole project, it's been amazing. And then uh, CTA, uh, thanks again for hosting us today and for organizing the uh, the pilot activities in Andalusia, and uh, Megan and your team in Upper Austria Energy Agency for, for doing likewise in, in that region. And my colleagues in Toos, uh, Stephen in particular, who has led the project uh, single-handedly for the last year or so, so, so bless you. Um, so that's all for me. Um, I hope you have uh, an enjoyable and informative rest of the day. I'll hand you back to Mariana. Thank you very much, uh, Patrick. Right now, maybe you are wondering what's the case uh, behind the pilot. Uh, Patrick uh, already mentioned. We will uh, start uh, with Spain because we are located here. So I will leave the floor right now to Joaquin, uh, who will develop uh, what's the situation in, especially in Andalusia, and what's the forecast, I suppose. So please uh, go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you, the opportunity uh, uh, that uh, as far as the association is here. Uh, I pay attention carefully to all the problems of the, 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 this, the explanations previously, and this is exactly what we are suffering. Well, uh, I'm in charge of the international sales manager of, of Kiter. Kiter is a manufacturer of heat pumps, and Kiter is one of the companies which is included in the, in the AFAR Association, which is the Andalusian Association of Manufacturers of uh, Refrigerant and, and, uh, and Air Conditioning. So we are based, it is a cluster of companies we, which is located in Lucena. Lucena is in the south of Cordoba. And, and it's the, the, all the companies included in the association are, I would say, responsible of more or less 75% of all the installations manufactured in Spain uh, that are, are, are developed here. So uh, it is a, a big cluster in, com in, 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 the, in the country, which is based in Lucena. But the problem here, and I've been here to speak about, how, well, the, the training needs and solutions for the heat manufacturing and installing industry. So the problem we are facing with how to identify skilled people to work in our factories. Uh, Unfortunately, in Andalusia, we have one of the highest unemployment rates in, in Europe. It's 19%, uh, which is even worse if we concentrate in young people, people below 25 years. The unemployment rate is uh, 34%. So apparently, it should be easy to identify people willing to work in the industry. But this is not the case because of the of the skills. I mean, it is not possible that you are in a factory and you want to bring ordinarily whoever is skilled enough to work and can start work uh, immediately. So uh, in the association, it was detected this problem several years ago. And uh, the association started to work with a custom, let's say, specialized courses to train people that are willing to join the sector. How is it done? because the, uh, what we wanted to make sure is that we invest in people that are really interested to work. So this is a cooperation between the association and the manufacturers. Uh, even the manufacturers are in the first stage in the interviewing people that are willing to work to identify they are really interested because we have uh, identified that 95% of the people that do this course is actually working after the course in the different uh, factories. So uh, it started several years ago. It's a nice course. It's 500 hours 
uh, which is basically uh, the, the, the big point here is that people, even though they know nothing about, they are trained in electricity, welding, assembly, Fragraphic circuits, all the different uh, parts of a, an, a, of a factory would need. And it is not theoretical, but it is also practical. The association has uh, the main headquarters in Lucena, and we have uh, laboratories and real units there so that people can, first of all, theoretically understand what a heat pump is, the components and everything, but immediately they are touching how it works. And that, uh, let's say, it's much quicker how they, um, it's, it's an, an, an idea to, to, to really go quicker from whoever wants to work and does nothing to do with the sector and then to have the knowledge to start to work. So that, uh, that idea that's developed with the association is, is working and that's because the companies and the manufacturers are really something that they are demanding. Um, there's not only that kind of training, which is more oriented for basic training, whoever not knows nothing and then they can start to work. There is also an intermediate training uh, we are doing, which is more oriented for middle managers, also connected to leadership or uh, eco design, ERP regulations. Uh, now, for example, uh, for uh, ammonia or uh, propane uh, risks and hazards and so on. This is not only focused to let's say, people that is willing to work in the sector. This is open to the complete, uh, I would say, uh, pe uh, people around, installers, for example. Mm, installers are really interested because of the previous explanations. There are many installers that do know how to install a boiler, but know nothing about the heat pump. So they could also join these kind of courses. But uh, mm, designers, they are also willing to join. But people that even done anything to do, for example, recently on a project, uh, on a course about uh, propane, uh, even firefighters wanted to join and how to handle an emergency in case uh, an, an installation with propane is, uh, is having problems. So the idea is that to create knowledge, not only for our internal use as a manufacturer and workers, but to all the different parts that are in the, in the complete, in the complete uh, channel. Additionally, for example, another point, which is, would be uh, the, the third part we are also working at, is with the universities. Uh, recently, we are, we've established a special scholarship in, with the University of Córdoba. The idea, again, is to close the gap between the young people and this industry so that they know they have an opportunity. They can develop a nice uh, career in a sector which is quite remarkable in the south of, of, of Córdoba. But, but uh, it's not well known because this technology, the heat pump technology, is not as, as known as it should be, especially now according to, recent, to the recent demands and, and trends in the market. Um, I would like also to, it's really interesting to understand and to, to listen to the, the previous people that spoke before me because this is exactly what we are feeling. We are feeling problems, for example, when we want to mm, become international and we, want, we are a manufacturer that delivers units in whatever the country is. We have to make sure the installer have the knowledge because the reputation of the, of the, the brand is in, her, in, in their hands. We want to make sure that they know how to handle units. But it is a they, we feel there's a lack of, of technicians. So we could probably go even manufacturing or even selling quicker but we don't want to take the risk of manufacturing chillers if they are hit if there is no one who is going to take care of them after sales warranty process all these so what, uh, another thing we're starting to do now i'm speaking as, as cater as a manufacturer mm -hmm. internationally we have subsidiaries in france in the netherlands in switzerland and they're constantly saying we cannot do anything else because we don't find people willing to work here we don't find technicians. We cannot sell units if we are not going to provide a service, a commission or a startup. So we started to, uh, again, taking the responsibility from, from, from the association, in this case, from the factory, to train people who is willing to go abroad as, as international technicians that are able to work in different countries. There are challenges here as well. Because of the regulation, it is not the same to go to France or go to Switzerland or go to the Netherlands. 
different regulations, different certifications. So that would be, I would say, a future challenge we would like uh, to, to solve, to make it easier to identify a technician skilled enough with one, let's say, cert certification paper that would make it easier for them to go no matter the country where, where they are installed in. So that's, uh, uh, that's actually happening. Uh, people train in the factory now are technicians in Switzerland, are technicians in France, because they were not able to identify people skilled enough in this. And now we are working on, a, on another idea, which is not only uh, teaching here, but bringing knowledge from abroad. Uh, we've got a subsidiary company, which is in the Netherlands, and they have a quite interesting um, schools that are training specific uh, heat pump technology elements. Now specifically, uh, now, now we're telling the problem of uh, creating new heat pumps, not based on 410A, but based, for example, on propane, going low in GWP, global warming power solutions. It is not the same to work with 14A than to work with propane. The question is, are the same guys who are in charge of 14A going to be the same ones that are going to work with propane? How are these guys going to be trained? I, are they going to need a specific certification different from one country to another? So that's one of the challenges we feel we're going to, to face. So the idea is now we want to bring the uh, teachers specialized in propane heat pumps from the Netherlands to the to the factory to do specific training courses and hopefully they are going to be given a, a certification so that they make us make them able to to do installations or commissions in case it's needed but definitely the the sector is growing the association and all the manufacturers uh, are growing in, in but but we feel it is much easier to build a new factory than to find people that work inside the factory that's one of the main limitations we're finding. In fact, uh, Cater, we are recently, we, we will we st expanded the facilities. Yes, the manufacturers are increasing our facilities because we need more square meters to work and to provide heat pumps. The problem is to identify skilled people quickly enough to join the project. So it would be great if all the administrations, project like this, help in the European Union to provide, let's say, to accelerate all this process. I hope it works. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Joaquin. We will now move to the next presentation and we will know more about the Irish pilot. Uh, let me bring you the slide. Master, so you can start speaking and uh, there you go. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Mariana. So um, a very interesting there. Thanks, uh, Joaquin, for that. Um, now I'm going to bring you through the Irish pilot. Um, as Parik already mentioned, we, we focused on local authorities and the kind of role they have in the heat pump installation quality, especially in Ireland, um, as we'll just go through in a minute. So we primarily focused on local authorities after our uh, market research. So we found that because there was um, uh, a lot of, let's say, uh, policy that, that was pushing for heat pumps in Ireland, that we had to you know, find out where we would find the most impact and local authorities they have a lot of um, buildings under them. I just put down some figures there. It's over 100,000 so far, in, and there's more every year that's been put onto that um, onto that number. So the secondary focus was on large-scale heat pump installations, but um, our main focus was kind of on um, domestic uh, heat pump installations and kind of private and public as well, you could say, uh, domestic heat pump installations. So just to give you a background, as, um, as there's, quite, there's quite a lot there that, uh, that's kind of happening. So the Irish government um, have invested 8 billion in a national retrofit program. So that's one of the first key bits of policy that we found that was kind of driving this um, this domestic market. That, um, so we had, you know, you've retrofits that, that are coming through and then you've things like the technical guidance document L, which is um, conservation of fuel and energy. This sets a minimum energy performance requirement for new buildings and retrofits. And the general, uh, from speaking with industry, the general kind of consensus is to get to these minimum energy performances, you just ins you install a heat pump. It's the easiest way to do it. So 
all new houses have heat pumps and all uh, major retrofits in Ireland have heat pumps be in, uh, planned into them as well. So that's it's it's good news for I suppose Ireland and the heat pump industry in Ireland. But again, the as Porik said as well, we have a bit of a housing crisis in Ireland, and this also brought this new uh, policy called the Housing for All scheme or the Housing for All policy. So a significant part of this is the provision of 90,000 social homes by 2030. So again, as I said, the local authorities, the reason why we focused on local authorities was because the social homes are, um, I wouldn't say controlled, but they're um, they're provided by the local authorities. So it, we were thinking up until 2030, how can we make the most impact? Well, we can, we can easily kind of get in with the local authorities. And um, so that's how, that's how we got in. Another thing to bring up as well is there was a standard issued in Ireland, um, SR50-4, and it gives guidelines on design, installation, commissioning of heat pump systems, and that's up to 70 kilowatts. So again, it's kind of taking the full domestic range, you could say. Um, so yeah, that's just that, that was the, the background to um, our pilot activity. So as I said, we focused on local authorities, but we also focused on other stakeholders too, like housing authorities and developers. So. And then the Department of Environment, Climate and Communication. So this this is a department that's responsible for setting out targets and the housing roadmap as well. So just to give you an idea what, what we call in a local authority in Ireland is a county council. Um, they're responsible for all social housing in Ireland and they're also responsible for tendering for those houses too and, um, and procurement as well for materials. So they have um, a lot of influence, you could say, on the market because they're as I would, as what we've seen from our pilot activities is they were leading the way when it comes to a lot of these um, procurement for materials and I suppose higher efficiencies they were looking for. And one of the main things that I would say we found from it was that um, beforehand the local authorities were given targets for houses saying we need 3,000 houses in your local, um, local vicinity. So we need 3,000 houses. You're given an X amount of money. You have to deal with it that way. But now there was a new, um, there was a changeover. So there was actually local authorities were asked how many houses would they be able to um, produce or uh, you could say how many houses or would they be responsible for that year? And it's on a yearly basis as well. So each year they're asked how many houses can you facilitate or how many houses can you um, uh, procure for? So it's kind of, it's more focusing on the demand side and it's also helping with um uh, quality of installations too because it's not just about quantity it's they're specifying for quality too um the heat pump association another thing that we we were very heavily involved with during the uh during the pilot activities again heat pump suppliers manufacturers in ireland they have um a responsibility to develop and boost heat pump market and also a you could say a um uh, a vested interest too in boosting it too but uh they were very helpful, especially um, with, let's say, the training that we provided for local authorities and their contractors and so on. Uh, training providers, again, and they're a huge part of our um, huge part of our uh, pilot activities, and they're responsible for upskilling and reskilling of workers too. And then heating system and designer designers and installers and end users as well. So we went, you could say, from top to bottom. So you could, I, you could say, homeowners and social housing tenants. They're the day-to-day -day operation users of um, heat pumps. Local authorities, they're looking at procurement and specification. Housing authorities, same as. Department, you're looking at policy. Heat pump association, you're looking at training and skills. Same as Sustainable Energy Authority Ireland, they're looking for, they're more of the uh, the grant providing in Ireland. So that's kind of, again, policy, you could say. But um, so we, we went through the whole value chain, you could say, and we could all, we were, um, I would say, quite successful as well. So how do we start with engagement with the local authorities? So as a third level institution to US, um, we were given pretty much um, <laughs> good access, I would say, because we brought to them, we went to them in their own local authority offices and we engaged with their staff and provided training for their internal housing uh, department as well. So we gave them a quick, uh, it was usually, well, when I say quick, it was anywhere between uh, three hours and six hours training. So. <laughs> Um, but it was quick compared to other courses, you could say. So we give them a crash course in heat pumps and what to look out for in heat pumps and the kind of what uh, what industry is talking about at heat pumps as well. So as it says there, the first step was engagement with local authorities was always training of internal staff. So make sure that they understand the system before 
trying to explain it to their um, tenants or explain or let's say for their specifications and their uh, procurement of um, for contractors. Second step then was raising awareness for the general public, the, the local authority staff and the tenants of these uh, social housing um, units. And the third step then was the engagement with contractors, i.e. designers and installers and provide training for them. Non-domestic training, so we can we engage with consulting engineers. They they worked as the heating designers almost. Uh, consulting engineers, heat pump suppliers, non-domestic designers, and then we need to pinpoint the needs of the sector. And again, that helped us to uh, uh, let's say push out training um, a training plan that consists of short training. So we we decided to use a short training system because a lot of times these installers, designers so on and so forth, they, they re rarely have time to sit down, let alone sit down for a couple of a couple of weeks for a training course or whatever so forth. So short, concise training was what, what we um, pushed for in the Irish pilot. And from our um, our, our feedback that we got from the, the trainings, that it was pretty successful and more is <laughs> more is wanted and more is needed, some, some would say. But uh, again, that's, again, slowly but surely. Further engagement is planned, to be fair, after the lifetime of the project, and we're hoping to roll this out um, with more and more uh, stakeholders in the built environment, not just in heat pumps, but I suppose the entire um, built environment, you could say, the, that sector. So just a quick overview of the impacts. It, it probably doesn't mean a lot, but uh, from the training, um, the in primary energy savings is 1.76 gigawatt hours per year, so it's pretty significant. 468 people trained in the Irish pilot, one heat pump tool. Again, heat pump tool was created to, or benchmarking tool was created to help end users understand how they're, how much electricity they were using for their for their heat pump and how much is that going to cost. And again, it's kind of uh, reduced fears of high running costs for heat pumps. And we also had an Irish knowledge hub as well, which um, again, full of case studies and um, procurement guides as well for um, local authorities and uh, building owners as well. So I was a quick crash course. Um, my email's there if anybody would like to contact me if they need any more information or if they wish. So again, I'll hand it back to Mariana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, as you can see, we are seeing different approaches. So how uh, to overcome these challenges uh, heat pumps uh, bring us. We will now move uh, to other different challenges uh, in Upper Austria. It will be Megan speaking uh, about this. So Megan, uh, the floor is yours again now. Here. Thank you very much, Mariana. Yes, so I'm Megan Janak from the Regional Energy Agency of Upper Austria, and we were the third pilot project um, within a pro pilot region within the HP for All project. I'll just give a quick overview of the region of Upper Austria. So what are we talking about? Upper Austria is one of the Austrian of not the nine regions in Austria. We are in the northern western part of, of the country. Population of about 1.5 million. And the uh, capital is the city of Linz, which is where our offices are also located. It's an industrial but also very rural region. So 25% of Austrian industrial exports, so for the entire country, 25% come from our region alone. So a lot of industry. Um, at the same time, 50% of the population live in small municipalities. So we have a patchwork of industry spread out throughout a rural region, uh, throughout the rural regions. And um, so we're working with, uh, with both rural and, and industry. For an overview of our organization, the Regional Energy Agency of Upper Austria, we were, we were founded 30 years ago, a little over 30 years ago, to support the regional government in developing their energy strategies, but then also implementing them, rolling them out uh, on the field in order to achieve their, their goals. So our work is focused on increasing energy efficiency, the uptake of renewables, in the overall goal of achieving climate neutrality. We offer services across the value chain and across all stakeholders, working with, uh, the, with households, companies, and the public sector, mostly organ, um, our key activities being advice and information. Uh, we 
manage funding programs for the regional government. We also uh, offer a lot of training and to do some research. Additionally, we manage a cluster of over 250 companies in the environment and energy sector in Upper Austria. Uh, so we offer them information, we help them network, uh, we try to um, we uh, develop policy and implement policy also with the regional government in order to spur innovation in, and grow an ecosystem of uh, innovative companies that are able to uh, uh, work on the energy transition together. Market data from Upper Austria. So the region, over a little more than a in over just a little more than a decade, we were able to reduce greenhouse gases from the building sec in the building sector by almost forty percent. Um, and this is uh, we have achieved this through a combination of energy efficiency measures and renewable heating. So uh, this uh, is a big. Um, uh, that they really go hand in hand. We need both. We need to increase energy efficiency of our buildings and of our uh, processes and of our technologies, but also um, deplace oil and fossil fuels and go towards renewable heating. If we go a little more into um, data regarding the heat pump market, so you can see that in Upper Austria already 60% of um, space heating is covered by renewables and 43% of total heating, which in this case is also process heat, industrial heat. And that 60% um, is for, for overall, uh, the all markets, all sectors. If we just look at heating in residential, in res the residential sector, we can see that heat pumps uh, has the a market share of about 11 to 12% in the residential sector. In Upper Austria being a large biomass region, biomass does have the lead in the market but heat pumps has its place it is also increasing but it has a stable market uh, uh, market share uh, it really is one of the main technologies that is being used so the market for small residential applications is already quite mature and well developed well known uh, which is why as it was mentioned in our pilot region we focused more on the mid to larger scale heat pump installations and um, developing the market mostly towards uh, for uh, heat pump applications for process heat and industrial heat. So we have several, just some, some heat pump market trends. Market for small residential applications is well developed. We have several funding programs that are available both in the residential and non-residential sectors. Uh, and these are linked to strict efficiency criteria, which is a point that I'll come back to later. And new trends that have um, developed in the past years, we see combined systems of heating and cooling, but also hybrid systems where biomass and heat pumps are combined uh, to, to offer the, the level of heat, the, the amount of heat and the temperature of heat that is needed, especially uh, in this case, I have a case study in an industry that I can hopefully present then at the end. If th that was Upper Austria, if we go towards the Austria as a whole country. I'll slip over this quick because the graph too resembles quite a bit what uh, what Dan presented earlier. So we see a large growth in the um, in the heat pump sector uh, over the last years. So we are in a double digit growth of about 14% just between 2020 2021. So 300 350 heat pumps, a thousand heat pumps in operation um, with just under 40,000 new heat pumps installed in 2021 alone and that the, the Austrian heat pump sector uh, represents a market of over 1 billion euro a year and over 2,000 full-time jobs. And this full-time jobs um, is already 500 full-time jobs more than when we developed the heat pump for all project um, around four years ago. So the increase in, in installation of, of heat pumps is also we see uh, creating uh, quality, well-paid, uh, full-time jobs on the market, which um, which is positive as long as you have the people to fill those uh, <laughs> fill those spots. The export rate in in Austria, so there's an export rate of about 33% uh, of the heat pumps that are manufactured are exported. So now instead, I'll just um, I'm going to move towards the idea: How have we in Upper Austria? What has been our approach over the last decades for this market transformation uh, towards clean, uh, clean heating? This is uh, we use the approach which we call carrot sticks and tambourines. So the carrots being uh, financial incentives, the sticks being regulatory measures, and the tambourines is everything information and uh, and awareness raising. 
So we've been using this, um, this image for quite a few years, and then we realized that uh, there's another aspect that, um, that also plays a, a key role, and that is innovation. So innovation is that our donkey uh, got a skateboard, which is the innovation that he can now move forward without even needing to walk himself. And that innovation is, um, is also something we need to spur on the market and, and make sure uh, is also um, will, will help us in achieving our goals. So applied to, sorry, applied to renewable heating market, what does uh, this policy package then, what does it look like? So on the, we have funding programs for renewable heating and we link them to strict criteria, which means to access the funding, you need your system needs to, to uh, fulfill strict efficiency criteria, which ensures that only high quality installations are, are taking place and also um, that manufacturers are constantly pushed to, uh, to produce, develop and produce more efficient and more, um, uh, more efficient technologies. The regulatory measures, so we have ambitious but also dynamic standards on building envelopes and technical equipment that we update regularly throughout the years. So by updating the, the standards, you also spur innovation by making it necessary for buildings to be more efficient and technologies to be more efficient so that you do constantly increase uh, energy efficiency and decrease energy use with time. We have a, reg uh, we have a policy framework for in Austria for banning oil and soon also banning gas. Uh, heating in new buildings, it is already banned. And we have a step phased plan in place to uh, eliminate uh, oil and uh, fossil heating in existing buildings over the next, uh, over the next decade. So there, there is an end in sight that fossil fuels, the government has given a clear message that fossil fuels uh, does have a, do have a an, uh, final date. And we support then these um, these measures with uh, with training programs, with campaigns, with energy advice for all actors along the market. Lessons learned from on the ground again regarding uh, market transformation. So market transformation um, these. Uh, these points are specifically uh, not specific to the heating market per se, but something that we use that we've been using uh, throughout the last decade. So, uh, of course, the policy package that um, that I've just presented, something that I, that is important, however, is also market segmentation. So that to understand that different different actors will need different instruments, and this seems very logical, but how do you go about this? Us as an energy agency to make sure that the efforts that we're putting into the market will have um, will trigger effects as quickly and also long-lasting effects. Where should we start is always the question. So we do a lot of market segmentation where we look at, for example, the residential sector. You can look at the, not all buildings are the same. So you can look at the structure. Is it a single family house or a, or a multifamily house? The ownership, is it rented apartments? or condominiums, and also different income levels. Each one of these groups will need different, um, will need, uh, different instruments. Companies, you can segment them by size and by sector. And you need to quantify every one of these. How many do I have and um, which types? And this is a critical part because then the questions come of which consumer group is most likely to be activated and how can I reach them? because I want to activate the groups that I can um, start with the easier groups, not with the harder groups. Start by focusing on the groups that you can reach, that you can activate, and that will have an impact on your market. And by getting these moving, then they will also act as, um, as a catalyst for, the, the, for the, the market, maybe the skills market, the manufacturers, the installers. We'll get the whole market going, and then this can spur over onto other groups um, that you can work on with time that are maybe harder to reach or harder to 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 activate. So that is um, that is a key key approach that we uh, that we use. This requires, of course, then what we call market intelligence. You need to understand your market. It needs to be based on empirical data, not uh, anecdotal data. So make sure that you have true, um, real numbers from on the ground from the installers regarding the price of energy, regarding their capacities. Um, 
and not just anecdotal, anecdotal evidence coming from one or two people that uh, have stories to tell. We offer in our market a technology portfolio. Heat pumps is one of many um, trusted and, uh, and uh, reliable technologies that we, are, that we are using and need to use to achieve um, our, our goals. Energy efficiency, we consider to be also one of these. It's not a technology in itself, but energy efficiency being one of the tools in our technology portfolio that, uh, of course, um, needs to go hand in hand with the, with the renewables. As I mentioned, financial incentives, um, if to be, they need to be attractive, they need to be stable to, um, to create trust and long-term momentum. We offer as energy agency uh, free, in, um, free product independent and reliable uh, energy advice to guide investment decisions. And this is something that we find also is, uh, is important. It's important that the, the actors and the stakeholders have an organization or, or a reference they can come to and ask about without feeling that they're being sold a product or sold a specific technology. And that in our case is, um, is the energy agency. And finally, supporting these market structures, of course, with training across the value chain, uh, campaigns, networking between relevant companies. So how did, what did this mean for our pilot activities for, uh, for in, in HP for All? Um, oops, sorry about that. So as we've mentioned, uh, in our case, there was a low level of market penetration of mid to large scale uh, heat pumps, especially for process heat. And also there was a large need for training of uh, technology laggers. So the installers who have uh, spent years installing oil and gas boilers, but hadn't gotten into the heat pump market yet because of the increase in demand, they needed to. So they needed to, they, there was a, uh, a large need for these technology laggers to finally get caught up. Our activities, uh, we strongly extended our training portfolio across the, uh, and awareness raising activities across the, the value chain from policymakers to installers to planners and users. Uh, we had um, just under 800 people at our events, uh, under just uh, under 300 that were trained. Um, specifically, we uh, had access to, we had contact to a lot of building owners on at uh, trade shows. And we developed information materials and tools. Um, in our case, the, the largest piece and the most important piece for our region was the Renewable Process Heat Guide which is an information guide that offers comprehensive information about heat pumps of the mid to larger scale uh, with case studies on how they, uh, on applications in companies um, and also uh, guidance on, uh, on energy efficiency. Just to give you an overview of two or three case studies, um, so we won't go into the details, but we have uh, technical case studies on, on these companies. So, this is a company, uh, Stalium, which is an injecting molding company. So uh, they do pl plastic processing, 1,700 employees worldwide, uh, 1,200 in Austria. And their goal was to replace their 2.2 megawatt oil boiler with fossil, f fossil fuel free heating and cooling for their buildings. And this is uh, the company which our project partners, we did a site visit and visited them um, last year. They have uh, used three, they've installed three heat pumps of a total capacity of uh, over 2,000 uh, kilowatts. And they recover heat from the production process. Uh, and they also recover heat from their compressed air system and use that heat to, uh, to heat uh, for the space heating of all of their buildings. And they've also combined this with one uh, megawatt power of, um, of uh, PV on the rooftops of the building. So this is, uh, they are now completely uh, fossil fuel for their, free for their space heating. And this is a case uh, where it's a combination of biomass and heat pumps, which has permitted this company to, to also go fossil fuel free. So Pineda is a manufacturing of fire safety doors with a powder coating process, which is a very high temperature uh, process, but also one that's used in so many industries throughout Europe, where all products are then um, spray painted or powder coated and then cured in a high temperature cured oven. They have 400 employees and their goal was to convert away from, from gas and go towards bioenergy for space heating, for not only space heating, but also for their manufacturing processes. 
And the technical solution that they have found is first of all, they went through their whole building and did many, many energy efficiency um, measures where they took those first. So uh, the way that the doors opened and closed, the temperatures of their systems, uh, they, many different measures. And then they installed two wo wood chip boilers to be able to go reach those high temperatures they needed for their uh, curing ovens. And at the same time, they now recuperate that heat from those areas of the buildings using heat pumps to then um, heat the space uh, to, uh, they recover the heat and use it in the gluing process uh, within their, their manufacturing uh, building. So it's actually recuperating the heat from, from one process to use it in the second process, which is a, uh, they're sa saving CO2 via energy efficiency measures you by using waste heat and also by converting to biomass. So this is also a, a quite uh, interesting. And then my last, uh, last example that I have with me today is Gras Pointna, which is a manufacturer of concrete, very energy, <laughs> energy intense uh, uh, process. And they have 350 employees in 11 countries. They also wanted to eliminate uh, the oil on their on their site in Austria and uh, go towards renewable heating and cooling for their buildings. They did um, 28 deep drillings all along uh, throughout the, their, their site and they installed two heat pumps uh, combined with 200, uh, 200 kilowatt of PV and also um, 350 square meters of solar thermal. Uh, so you can see all across the roof that now they have PV and solar thermal everywhere. And then within their building, the, they heat using concrete core activation of the building and floor heating and ceiling panels in the office uh, areas. And by, by doing the, the, this conversion, they have eliminated the 40,000 liters of oil that they used to consume per year. So as we can see, the applications for mid to large scale uh, heat pumps in industry, the technology is there. It can also be economically feasible, but we need also more such examples of how it gets done uh, to s what we're going to do now uh, through beyond the HP for All project is really using these case studies, using the networking that we've um, built up between stakeholders on the market to try to get more such projects in, uh, in the rest of our industry in Upper Austria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Megan, uh, and thank you all uh, the speakers for this interesting uh, first part of the event. Uh, as I was saying from the very beginning, this is not uh, just us speaking. Uh, we would like to hear as well from you. I'm pretty certain that you have uh, several questions for uh, our speakers. So please go ahead. I will try to moderate as best as I can because we have uh, people connected online. If you agree, uh, we can maybe start with the people who, who we have on site. I don't know if you have any questions for any of our speakers? Uh, uh, Miguel, who is uh, attending here, or the, our colleagues from Segrave, if you have any questions that you would like to address to our speakers, uh, please raise your hand. Uh, I will uh, leave you the floor so you can uh, ask them. Uh, if not, uh, I will try to see if there is any question or hand raise uh, online for the um, speaker so they can uh, answer your questions. No questions on site? Yes, there's a question, so uh, I will leave you the floor. Uh, thank you very much. Is this on? I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, it is. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Luca Boban. I come from U University of Zagreb and Croatian Heat Pump Association. I would probably have a question for, for each of the presenters, but I will limit to the to the last one. So for Mrs. Megan, I have one short question about uh, how is defined efficiency uh, standard for the systems. You said it's very strict. So regarding the heat pump systems, is it defined on the on the heat pump COP, seasonal co coefficient of performance, or maybe some kind of calculation of primary energy? How how do you define the standards if you know and, and how they are checked by, by legal bodies? 
There's a second microphone. Wonderful. Yes, so thank you for the question. Um, so for example, the uh, it's a combination of criteria which uh, has to do with, yes, the, the efficiency for the with the seasonal performance. Uh, the um, global warming potential of the refrigerants that are used have also a maximum threshold. The flow temperature has a maximum threshold. threshold. And the systems, uh, there's a, um, for air heat pumps, there's a maximum threshold for um, sound, so noise, um, noise level. And uh, also systems need to be uh, combined with a certain amount of photovoltaic or solar thermal um, within within the building, or a, a electricity contract for renewable electricity. So the heat pumps are being run on electricity that is uh, uh, has a certificate or a, a renewable electricity contract with your utility provider. Um, so, for example, and then these these criteria are different depending on the residential sector or non-residential, and depending on the level of uh, of uh, subsidy that is uh, that the funding that is. Um, that is sought after. So it's a little more. Those are like the point. The points that are are looked at. Um, if there's, if you'd like more details, then we can talk about it bilaterally. And how is it, how it's. Uh, so there's obviously the, there's the the efficiency of a system. Um, there's certain the certifications of the manufacturing companies that uh, talk about the that that show the, the efficiency of the of the systems. But there's also for noise and uh, for the combination with. Um, renewable electricity contracts or PV and solar. There's a certain amount of uh, control tours that are done for people who have received subsidies that some of my colleagues um, have um, random test, uh, checks that they do where they go around to people who have received subsidies to make sure that those criteria are, uh, uh, are fulfilled. If not, the subsidy needs to be repaid. Uh, do, you have, do you have another question? Here on site. If not, uh, I will. Yes, yes. There's another question. I would like to pose a question to, to the uh, different speakers. Uh, it has been uh, highlighted uh, the key role and also the bottleneck that is uh, being uh, the, the um, bottleneck role that is being uh, played by the uh, installers. So I would like you to uh, delve a little bit more, if possible, both afar and uh, our uh, project uh, partners into the uh, how uh, how are your views uh, on the role of installers in the uh, training and education uh, scenario that is uh, set to take place in the uh, coming years well that's a <coughs> complicated question uh, certainly uh, and now i'm speaking in uh, let's say as a manufacturer, uh, you've got your own brand. You do your heat pump. You think it works nice, but then you are in hands of the installer. If the installer doesn't know the business and do it in the wrong place, I mean, the the, the reputation of their brand is in risk. So, uh, how it, 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 does it make sense to go and take the risk and go for whoever in the world wants to be an installer? I don't think so. We should to make clear, absolutely sure that uh, that that they know how to do and how to work with your units. So uh, what we are doing so far is trying to, whenever we have a new agreement or a new installer or a new distribution mm, guy uh, in a different place, we invite them to come to the factory. So first of all, let's say that it's compulsory to get uh, to get to know each other and make sure they know what they're doing. And after that. Let's say we all feel confident to continue with the with the business, but again, this is creating a, a bottleneck. It is impossible for us to 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 be to do directly the directly do such kind of training. So uh, it's uh, a need that it shouldn't be the factories or the yeah that that are in charge of that training. But we would love to know, uh, make sure that depending on the on the no, no matter what the country is, there are many more and more skilled people that know how to handle these units but i think it's uh, public authorities i mean it, it's it's uh, a holistic approach on this everyone should be involved because otherwise the business is growing but this is not grow going to grow that fast as apparently it's needed because of this of this limitation thanks 
Yeah, just to share maybe some uh, items that we have encountered um, in the Irish side of the situation. That first of all, I fully agree, uh, Joaquin, with the idea that the manufacturer has to protect its brand. But this is challenging and difficult because the manufacturer's representative in in a region have limited resources and they have limit and then they have to try and engage with installers and and hope that they will absorb the information that you want them to absorb and then be committed to practice that properly regardless of price pressures in a contract when it's very easy to leave one piece to one side because you can reduce your cost and you can compete with someone else who is not providing the same level of uh, technical solution which goes back to the fact that every manufacturer has a an ideal technical solution they would like to implement for their machine this is very challenging so um, in we have kind of two situations in in Ireland we have the the new build market which is driven by the building regulation so it's there's no need for incentive it, it from the building regulation point of view it's practically impossible to install a fossil fuel boiler so it ends up being a heat pump and there is no uh, national oversight let's say of the quality standards so it, we, we, we've often thought of uh, for the the regulated professions of gas boiler installers there's a regulate because it's a risky business and there's an association it would be nice if there was something for heat pumps to to guarantee that the design has been done properly the heat lo loss calculations are correct the heat pump is not oversized or undersized and that the heating system the heat emission system allow it to work as megan says at the correct flow temperature that is not forced to work at 55 degree flow temperature that it can work at a, a lower temperature um, on the other hand we have a grant system a subsidy for retrofit where there is quite a lot of oversight and inspection by our national energy authority sustainable energy ireland authority of ireland so but that is quite you know it has been it has taken a lot of effort for that system to to get up and running and a lot of difficulty has been encountered with with the industry to get buy-in for people to sit down and do a heat loss calculation when they're not used to doing that you know so um i think uh something along the lines of a a more coordinated approach for for new build and retrofit because in the new build situation it falls back on the representative of the manufacturer to protect their brand and that ultimately comes back to warranty protection you know uh, so it's a little bit risky you know it's a bit it's a lot of new installations going to take place and there's not much protection there for quality i think okay thank you very much uh i don't know if there is any more questions uh, from the people connected remotely if there are so, uh, please raise your hand uh, and we can try to manage your question. We'll, we'll just give a couple of seconds if uh, there's uh, anyone interested. If not, uh, we will just uh, stop for a few minutes for a coffee break and uh, we will continue uh, further uh, in 10 minutes. Uh, that will mean uh, more or less then uh, at uh, midday so we uh, really hope that you will continue with us uh, both connected remotely and the people on site and so uh, we will start uh, now our coffee break session thank you very much for this great uh, part uh, presentations and thank you very much for the discussions uh, we will see you in 10 minutes so uh, let's uh, have a coffee break now. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for waiting. Uh, I really hope you have a nice coffee break. Uh, we will move now to the next presentation. We have uh, done again. I uh, hope uh, he will uh, be giving some uh, interesting uh, details on the skills and the competency framework uh, he work uh, uh, with. So Dan, please go ahead. So I guarantee you, this is the last presentation from me. So just just try for the next ten minutes to, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So basically, the competency framework 
uh, I won't lie to you, it took a lot of work and I really thank all the partners for it. So Mariana said it was us at EHPA now, it was, it was absolutely everyone contributing with interviews, surveys, uh, you online probably filled in a survey or uh, some kind of interview that was related to this. So thank you if you did so. Um, so this is the um, culmination of a lot of work and it, it, took, it took quite some time. Um, we basically looked into everything. Uh, at EHPA, we're more uh, focused on, you know, policy, uh, dissemination, communication. So when we were asked to prepare this competency framework, we had to like really plan and try to throw the kitchen sink at it uh, to get as much information as possible to put there. Eh? Uh, so we looked into, we started by looking into all the work that our partners were doing uh, as part of other deliverables uh, because there were a lot of there was um, there were a lot of there was a lot of data there about the the skills needed basically what were the training providers doing in the last 10 years what trainings are they doing now what trainings do they want to do in the next five ten years and by they want to do I mean what is the market asking of them we took a look at the uh, at the, um, the particular aspects of the pilot sites. Uh, we took a look from the European level. Uh, we took a look into basically anyone that could contribute towards this. Um, there are also a lot of projects that uh, that maybe you know about as well. So Heat Pump for All is only one project, but there's also other ones that I encourage you to look into as well. And we took a look into what they were doing uh, on the on the skills front and especially on the competency frameworks. Um, then, uh, well, let's see how do we we gather the information. How do we write this competency framework? How it should be. Uh, took a look into about four examples of competency frameworks, anywhere from the OECD to the IAEA uh, to the uh, ERDF. A lot of a lot of uh, a lot of letters there, eh? uh, but believe me, they were quite relevant. Uh, and then we tried to look what what would be the best one to 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 look into. We uh, spoiler alert: we uh, used the OECD one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, then we had we had workshops. Uh, to be honest, with COVID, we got quite specialized into online workshops, and uh, well, you're attending one right now. Uh, so uh, we tried to gather as much data and as many uh, many opinions as possible. And because you could just connect online, we had a lot of feedback from all over Europe, basically. Uh, yeah, these are the the nice banners that we prepared. Uh, then, of course, we try to use all the capacity of the, of the project and our partners. So using the website, using the social media, uh, looking at the companies um, and training providers that our partners are liaising with, um, looking at what our membership base uh, thinks that the competencies needed are, um, looking into the national heat pump associations, the manufacturers and so on. Um, trying to get information from whoever participates in our flagship heat pump uh, events such as the forum and the carb cities so basically a lot a lot of opportunities to contribute and then of course took uh, began time to actually uh, write the thing <laughs> and try to compile uh, all the data that we had collected uh, so uh, just a little bit about value chain positioning, core competencies, clusters, key indicator levels, and some notes that, uh, uh, well, basically, hopefully, uh, will be explored in the future as well. Uh, so this is the value chain positioning. Basically, it's just three, let's call them types of uh, of uh, uh, professionals that work in the in the heat pump installation chain. Uh, some are just called installers. The others are called chief installers, for lack of a better word. We could just call them something else if you wish, but chief installers looks pretty good. And the other one, corporate. So the people that are behind the scenes in logistics, organizational, budgeting, uh, you know, uh, working with Excel's all the time. So we cannot... Uh, we cannot um, leave anyone behind so then uh, what are the uh, what are the types of competencies that uh, these these professionals should have uh, to be honest it's 
really difficult to narrow them down. So we ended up narrowing them down into three clusters, uh, totaling 26 competencies. Again, because each person has kind of from their experience what they would like to see in an installer or what they would like to see in a team leader of installers and so on. So it was, it was pretty difficult. Uh, and you will see that reskilling, upskilling, or having installers is not so easy because there are some competencies that are maybe you don't think about them. So maybe when you think about installers, you think about the technical competencies, right? There is a very specialized person needs to come, they design the system, they install it, they know how to troubleshoot it, they know how to work their, their computer diagnostic software, they know how to maintain it and so, and so forth. But you might forget that this is a person, they come to your house, they speak to you, they explain you the things, they prob you probably had a phone call with them or some of their colleagues before. They, this takes some customer, uh, customer oriented competencies. Um, this person needs to tell you about, you know, what are the advantages of a, a heat pump. They cannot just explain you in technical terms for a person that has no knowledge whatsoever before you have decided to install the heat pump, right? They need to, to explain it in a simple way how it works maybe, right? There are different end users and knowledge bases. Um, they need to know uh, how different systems uh, relate with each other. They need to have interpersonal skills. They need to have negotiation skills, for example, or promotional and sales, right? There's a lot of companies that offer promotions. The installer needs to be aware about of, of that when they deal with the customer. Um, then there are the business organizational ones. Again, uh, to install a heat pump, you basically also need to think a little bit about the logistics of it. The heat pump does not quite transport itself to your house by itself. It needs probably to be stored somewhere. Uh, sorry. It needs probably to be well, manufactured, uh, stored, transported to, uh, you know, a, a, store, a, a storage area. Uh, your company needs to order this. You need to tell the company what kind of heat pump you need, when do you need it, and so on. So this is quite, this is quite complex, and sometimes we, we, we forget it. Uh, the, the person needs to be able to delegate, for example, in a team. So if it's a team of installers, let's call them the, the chief installer, needs to be able to delegate to, to, the, to the others. Uh, they need to have the ability to even mentor other installers, right? Let's not forget about that. So again, a competency. Um, they need to uh, they need to have, of course, they need to know about project management, installing a well, almost anything in life is a project, but let's call it installing a heat pump is, of course, pro a, a project that you need to manage. Uh, they need to know about change management. Change management, something happens, you need to install another type of heat pump, or the way you're installing the heat pump is changing, you need to adapt to this. So is basically, once you start looking at this, installers, uh, to quote our, uh, our German heat pump associations, eh? they're unsung superheroes of, uh, of the energy transition. Eh? Uh, I should have put that banner when the installer uh, talks to Thor and Hulk and says, uh, I'm also doing my part. Um, so again, this is, this is a, a very big ask. And when we talk about upskilling, reskilling, um, getting uh, the new gen new generations, let's say, to get into this field uh, is not just the technical part, it's the other things as well. And let's be honest, this this is basically in all jobs, right? But it's just something to, to keep in mind, especially when it's so customer orientated. Uh, we were talking about, and you said, you know, how, how, it, how it looks like, uh, you know, the image of the company and so on. Imagine the installer not having good interpersonal skills and coming and not explaining to you very well. We're, we're all people and we understand the, the quality of, uh, of services that you need. Um, so just to take one, one example, right? Uh, the, the digital one. Uh, so uh, in the in the in the document, every competency, every one of the twenty-six has a definition of what exactly it is. Uh, that 
is a little bit adapted to what the data gathering that we did says that this should be should be linked to. So for example, digital should be linked with BIM, for example, right? The key indicator, the f so there are three key indicators. Uh, each of them uh, basically becomes more complex. Key indicator one says that for digital, you basically have to have a basic knowledge of the hardware and software that you use for, for the heat pump installation, how it works, right? The second level is a medium knowledge of this and how exactly does it fit in with all the other parts? The, the third one, let's say you are the company owner of this installation uh, process, right? You need to know what tools exactly do you need to manage the entire process? Uh, you need to take feedback from your installation staff. You need to provide them the training necessary to use the new hardware and software. Um, digital might seem something like very easy, but again, the, the installer or the chief installer or the organizational uh, owner needs to know how to use something that might seem very common nowadays, but an email or social media to communicate with the clients. Or um, uh, they need to use the, the diagnostic tools and maybe they want to, to program one in, in their in-house. In um, again, um, something that we talked about, the customer, uh, customer communication. So the key indicator one, the, the installer needs to be able to talk on the phone to explain in maybe non-technical uh, way uh, how the heat pump works, the process of its installation, the process of its maintenance, uh, how much time will it take to install. The second level, uh, again, to, uh, to do the same, but an added complexity of, uh, of uh, finding trends in the, in the questions that the customers ask of uh, basically adapting the entire team to these types of questions and making sure they know how to answer of liaising with other other departments in the company right let's take a, a company that has uh, commu a communication department a administration department you as an installer get a lot of questions about this particular heat pump you should communicate with the communications department to answer that question on your website, on the social media, so that people will know in the future, right? Um, the, the third one, again, second one, plus ad additional complexity of uh, making sure that all the teams are running successfully, making sure that your business is uh, improving customer satisfaction. You are basically um, solving any problems in customer satisfaction that that uh, that occur. Um, knowing that good customer uh, communication, good services, basically increase the likelihood of repeat or expanded business. Right. So when you're an installer, let's say in the first key indicator. Uh, maybe you don't need it, but in the second or third, you need to know that uh, basically the work that you're doing contributes to the organization and its growth. And if you do a good job, if you communicate well, if your services are timely and in an efficient manner, this will grow your organization yourself as well and expand the business. Right? Uh, logistics. Again, uh, we talked about this. The, the heat pump doesn't appear out of thin air. You have to plan for it. This needs to be installed. Uh, as an installer, let's say you go and uh, troubleshoot a, uh, a problem. You need to know how to fix it. Maybe there's one part that is missing. You need to know how to order it, when it arrives, how long will it take. Maybe, maybe you have already stockpiled that particular part and you already have it and say, okay, it will be done by in one hour because we are very logistical focused and we know how to do our job. Probably this will guarantee repeat services and very good reviews online, right? And people do look online on reviews nowadays, I think. Uh, again, it's just being an installer, knowing how to plan to organize the moving and storage of equipment it's not just the heat pump, but your tools, the, the tools that you use in the installation, the pipes, everything that goes along with it. Uh, the second one uh, is not just the products, but um, 
also the the other resources like knowing knowing the warehousing capacity knowing um we had uh, last week a discussion about uh making installations in the same area of the city or of the region right so this is more efficient you go with all the pieces to one region rather than going to one region coming back to your headquarters going in the other opposite direction so planning could save you a lot a lot of time eh? uh, and this all goes into a little bit of time saved makes more installations that makes us achieve our goal uh the third one basically you're the you're the person in charge eh? you, you see a lot of problems with your logistics who could solve it if you're the person in charge you're the one that needs to have the competency to to know that you maybe need a specialized department on logistics and to uh to see uh all to take into account all the all the suggestions that are coming from the experience uh to take a look at all the logistical chains uh, to basically understand that each of these things uh, will improve the will basically reduce the costs to your organization and improve your uh, competitive advantage over others. Yeah, well, those were only three. Again, there are about uh, 23 others. If we would go over them, you would probably hate me. And I said just like 10, 15 minutes, and this is my last time. Eh? Um, hopefully, you will uh, you will have access to this soon it's uh what is it like 160 pages of quality reading it has some pictures uh a lot of graphs people like graphs uh <laughs> <laughs> lastly there's there's one more piece to this to this deliverable it's called the mutual recognition agreements i have some printed out for you for the people that are here live we can send you and you can print them out yourself for the people that are connecting online. Uh, we talked about uh, the capacity to move, to move from region to region, from country to country, at least in the European Union. Having these mutual recognition agreements, uh, it's basically just the, the start of the start. It's not even the, the, the first stage. This is the, the consideration that maybe we will start so at least this this should happen and uh, again cannot leave the room without signing it so each to his own eh? you have been warned uh thank you so much thank you very much dan uh, if you have any doubt regarding this uh, you can answer directly uh, uh, ask your question directly on the chat or then we will have a question and answer uh, section again, so we can um, address all your uh, questions again. Now we will move forward to the next presentation. We will connect remotely with uh, Ruchia Agrawal uh, from uh, IRC. She will be presenting uh, our uh, benchmarking tool, the, the tool uh, she has been developing for quite some months. Uh, Ruti, I suppose you are already over there connecting and you're here as well. Hi, Mariana, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you properly. So uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Mariana, for, for the flow. So can we go to next slide? Uh, so I'm Ruti Agrawal and I'm from IRC. Uh, we have the, over the uh, project uh, duration, uh, we have been developing the uh, heat pump benchmarking tool. So firstly, we'll go through an overview of what the heat pump benchmarking tool is. So as the name suggests, it, it's, a, it's a benchmarking tool which, benchmark the, which benchmarks the user's building with similar building in the country. And it predicts the annual energy consumption and energy cost for heating delivered by the heat pump. And based on these output, this tool uh, serves as a decision-making tool for the user. And it also increases the user's awareness about the heat pump and its operation cost and the electricity cost. And last but not the least, it's a user-friendly and it's very easy to use. Can you go to the next slide, please? So um, back 
Yeah. So uh, we have developed three tools with three different approaches for three pilot countries in three languages. Uh, so the uh, next slide, please. So first we'll go through uh, the overview of the benchmarking tool for Ireland. So this tool, the uh, aim of this tool is it predicts annual heating energy consumption and energy cost delivered by the heat pump. The target audience for this tool is homeowners or users who have already installed heat pump or they are planning to install heat pumps. And it, this uh, Irish benchmarking tool is designed based on the uh, building energy rating database provided by Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland. So basically this BER database provides a wide range of information on all aspects of building construction uh, that affects the energy performance of building. So uh, maybe, um, I mean, I will say this database contains annual energy consumption of all the houses in Ireland, which are registered in the National BER register. And, and these uh, uh, energy consumptions are according to BER rating of the individual houses. And these an annual energy consumption has been further categorized into energy consumption for space heating, water heating, lighting, ventilation, etc. So um, can you go to next slide, please? So uh, these are the choice of input, input for the users where, and all these uh, choice of inputs are based on the, uh, uh, based on that BER database. Uh, in, the, in the tool user has to first choose uh, uh, about the typology of their building. User are provided with a drop down menu with all these options, apartment, basement, dwelling, detached house, et cetera. And again, user or user need to enter the energy rating of their of their building, and then area of their building. Next slide, please. So based on the uh, BER database provided by the uh, Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland, we have created an Irish benchmarking database, which is about and which is about annual electricity consumption for space heating delivered by heat pump and water heating. And same thing for water heating delivered by the heat pump. So based on the user's input data, the tool predicts, tool matches the user's data, for example, apartment. So we have similar data, similar table for other types of building and other types of, and, and other energy ratings. So you, the, the tool matches the user's data in the database and it, uh, uh, maybe can we go to next slide please? And it gives output as predict as uh, annual average and annual energy consumption and energy cost. So uh, this is a screenshot of input page for the Irish tool where user have to select the type of building, energy rating, area of the house. And tool also ask the user if they know about the uh, electricity tariff applicable to their building. If they know, user can enter. If they don't know, tool uh, tool uh, uh, selects the standard uh, standard electricity tariff uh, uh, provided by SEI. And can you go to next slide, please? Where and after matching the user's input, that this is the output page of the tool where uh, first uh, tool. Uh, gives us gives a summary of user input and then the output is predicted electricity consumption for space heating and water heating and based on the uh, electricity tariff again tool calculates the uh, electricity cost for the space heating and water heating then we go to next slide please and yeah there, there is some case where uh, there is no data available in the database in that case user in the in that case tool selects the uh, best matching option with this uh, message that there is no data for your building the data display is the closest match so this is all about the irish tool uh, can we go to next slide please so uh, we'll quickly go through the uh, spanish tool so again spanish tool predicts annual heating energy consumption and heating energy cost. 
and the target audience for spanish tool is the public building owners and tenants who are planning to install heat pumps and again this uh, spanish tool is designed based on the different climatic condition of spain and thermal de thermal demand of building database provided by spanish energy agency can you go to next slide please so for the spanish uh, build, uh, for the spanish tool there there are a number of factors uh, which uh, which have been considered so uh, for the choice of input a uh, user needs to tell about little bit about their building information what are the type of their building whether it's individual building or block of building what is their location we have provided uh, a uh, drop down list of all the 40 or 52 spanish provinces and then year of construction whether it is before 2007 or after 2007 so basically all these information are based on the uh, database thermal demand of building database provided by the spanish uh, energy agency then uh, in this uh, uh, we have uh, uh, for user user need to enter the area of building which is of tree text there's no drop down menu for this and then user needs to tell about the type of heat pump they are planning to install which is again uh, a drop down menu and and the last thing is about nominal cop of heat pump in case user knows and doesn't know so if user know user can input it otherwise otherwise uh, will will take some default value for that so uh, this is a uh, uh an example of the database provided by the uh, IDA so where a uh, space heating thermal demand and domestic uh, hot water thermal demand has been mentioned for individual household and for for block of building so here this is thermal demand per unit area of the building for in uh, located in the various uh, location of the spain and you go to next slide please and below are the design calculation so because uh, in in spain weather plays an important role uh, and it's uh, and uh, spain has different climatic zone all over all over the country so instead of uh, considering the cop we have we have considered uh, we have to calculate the seasonal performance factor which is uh, i'll say which is a, a heat pump performance over the year so for that uh, to consider to consider the weather effect we have two correction factors first is weighing factor other is corrective factor these two factors are multiplied with nominal cop nominal cop is the cop calculated i mean uh, it's a it's a heat pumps performance at the standard lab condition so and i will further explain uh, can we go back please i will further explain about weighing factor and corrective factor in my uh, in my next slides so um based on uh, from the database uh, you, again tool matches the user's input and and find out finds out the thermal demand thermal heating demand and then again when user enters the area of building the tool will calculate the annual thermal demand for the whole building and then uh, with the help of this seasonal performance factor and thermal uh, heating demand tool calculates the uh, electrical heating demand for the heat pump can you go to next slide please so uh, in case user doesn't know the nominal cop and to make it easy for user we have collected some default cop values from heat pump experts and the and the uh, weighing factor and corrective factor have been these are the values defined by spanish technical building code so this table which you can see in the screen now is for weight factor where this a b c d and e are the climate uh, climate zones all over the uh, spain for each provinces uh, which is defined by the spanish technical building code so again uh, when uh, with the users input about their location and the heat pump uh, this uh, by matching users input the tool 
takes the value of wf to calculate the seasonal performance factor and the and the cf which is corrective factor is more technical so we have considered a default value for that without bothering much to the user so these are the basic design uh, cal these are the basic design approach and design calculation for the spanish tool um can we go to next slide please and this is this uh, this is the input page for the spanish tool where user have to tell about the type of building whether it's individual building or or block of building their location area of their house year of construction whether it's before 2007 or after 2007 and if they know about the cop and if they know about the uh, type of heat pump installed and also uh, this tool also ask the user about the uh, ta energy tariff applicable to their building okay, can you go to next slide please and this is the output page where the user tells the uh, what is their thermal demand per unit of area what is their thermal demand for entire building what is the predicted uh, seasonal performance factor and then what is their heating demand uh, if, in terms of their electricity consumption and what is their uh, cost for uh, delivering this uh, space heating and water heating so this is all about the spanish tool and uh, the last thing is a benchmarking tool designed for uh, for the upper austria this it has been designed by esp and this tool predicts the in situ cop of heat pump and it benchmarks the output of uh, heat pump with other similar system in a colored scale which is red to green which we'll see in in uh, in coming slides and the target audience is uh, end user of the heat pump and can we go back a little bit and this uh, this uh, tool is designed based on information available in the heat pump systems and smart meters installed in the at the user premises so we have to consider that uh, systems are advanced compared to ireland and spain in austria so that was the main consideration for designing the heat pump tool for austria so can we go next and for the next slide please so in terms of choice of input uh, user needs to tell about the heat output annual heat provided by the system and this information is available in the heat meter installed in the heat pump system in the building user need, next user needs to tell about the input electricity again user can find out this uh, with the dedicated electricity meter for heat pump or or they can use a smart meter data to enter this input and the next user have to tell about the type of heat pump installed again we have uh, there uh, a drop down menu has been provided for the last option and can you go next slide please and this design calculation is uh, very simple it's a heat output uh, divided by input electricity which tells you about the actual or in situ cop for the heat pump and uh, this is the input page where in this first uh, in the first uh, section user has to tell about the output heat provided by the user next user needs to tell about the input electricity uh, for the heat pump and user have to choose one of the uh, heat pump which is uh, which is installed in their building and uh, next slide please so this is the output uh, this is for air source heat pump where user's output is uh, the user cop is 4.42 so which is in the green range that means user's uh, heat pump is working well can we go to next slide please and this is for uh, for the ground source heat pump i think if i'm not correct because it's uh, in in german language and for this a uh, particular case study uh, users input users uh, heat pump is not in green range that means user need to take action uh, 
to improve the performance of their heat pump. Yeah, I think that, and here you can find the link of all the tools. And yeah, I think that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Uh, you will find this tool on our website uh, at the end of the event. We will provide all the contact details. So if you have any doubt, don't hesitate to uh, enter the website or just uh, write down an email and we will be more than happy to answer uh, your questions. Obviously, you can also uh, uh, provide a question on the chat. Then uh, we will move to the next and uh, last presentation of the day. So I will leave the floor now uh, to Carlos, uh, who will be speaking about uh, policy recommendations. Please keep in mind that we will be uh, finalizing the event with another uh, question and answer uh, section. So if you are uh, still uh, wondering what your questions are, uh, start thinking about them, so we will uh, have them later after this presentation. Carlos, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Mariana. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, I will I will I will try to to uh, summarize uh, in this uh, presentation uh, most of what uh, has been uh, so far said uh, about the aim and scope of this uh, project, and uh, particularly the main uh, conclusion that can be also drama and uh, we've also uh, emphasized by our project coordinator. Um, uh, uh, it is it is important uh, to note what uh, the uh, procedure uh, we have uh, adopted to draw up this uh, document uh, have uh, have been. No? Uh, first of all, this uh, document, which as uh, Mariana has just said, will be also uh, available on the website, and it is intended to act as a living document. Uh, we will be more than happy to uh, receive feedback from. Uh, uh, your side from the uh, uh, attendees to this uh, event and of course uh, anybody else uh, wishing to contribute to it. Uh, as I said, uh, it is uh, uh, intended to uh, provide a, a set of uh, policy recommendations, uh, very very clear and straight uh, and straight forward, uh, which are also focused on uh, the uh, boosting of, of uh, workshops, uh, supply and uh, uh, demand uh, throughout the EU. Uh, so uh, it is not just a, a more comprehensive uh, handbook uh, addressing the whole uh, heat pump sector, but uh, the skills and training and uh, uh, demand and offer boosting uh, within the uh, sector. It is also uh, intended to have a, as widespread as possible a, a dissemination through the website, uh, uh, even like uh, this, uh, this one, social networks, and of course, beyond the project lifetime, it is also uh, important to, to note about it no? in the uh, context of this uh, political framework that has been also uh, underlined by the representative from the uh, European Commission. Uh, we have taken stock from two complementary sources. On the, on the one hand, we have a scheme through uh, the most uh, relevant uh, practices to be scaled up or replicated EU-wide. And also, uh, we have conducted a number of workshops, uh, meetings, uh, uh, events with the participation of different uh, stakeholders uh, across the whole uh, heat pump uh, value, value chain. Um, I will not delve uh, that much into the very details of this uh, document. You can, you can uh, of course, uh, access them. Uh, but I would like to uh, uh, emphasize some of these uh, points. No? Uh, first of all, uh, and, I, and I think uh, everybody in uh, the room and in the uh, event will uh, agree uh, about it, it is necessary to put in place a strong uh, awareness raising campaign uh, to highlight the opportunities, the social recognition and the needs for this kind of uh, professional, especially uh, installers. Uh, this is a crucial. Uh, uh, since uh, it is uh, the backbone of uh, the other set of uh, recommendations that will uh, follow. No? Uh, without this kind of, let's say, marketing campaign, it will be very difficult to uh, achieve these uh, ambitious goals. Uh, of course, this uh, marketing uh, uh, tool uh, will not work uh, itself unless uh, there is also a more favorable uh, 
labor framework uh, to uh, underpin this this uh, this uh, effort, no? Uh, particularly uh, to uh, increase attractiveness, uh, for instance, uh, by uh, improving long-lasting uh, careers and uh, training, uh, talent pooling, and of course inclusiveness. Uh, we have been also talking about the high unemployment rates, for for uh, for instance, which is. Uh, contradictory with with this with this huge needs of of uh, professional uh, something is not working properly there and we now we, we have to uh, address it that's that's for sure uh, 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 along the way uh, uh, that what has been uh, stated by Dan um, uh, it is also uh, important to reinforce the legal framework uh, first of all at EU level but also as I will be mentioning uh, later on also at uh, state and uh, regional uh, level uh, particularly uh, as to the context of training and skill uh, curricula um, along the same the same way uh, this uh, training scheme uh, have to respond to a minimum content uh, which has to be Harmonize uh, at uh, EU level, uh, regardless of a more uh, ambitious scheme to be uh, adopted at regional or even local level. But of course, this minimum uh, is to be set. That okay. Um, also, a more uh, agile and uh, and uh, simplified uh, vocational education and training certification schemes are uh, needed. Uh, again, Dan has also. Uh, elaborated on the uh, idea and this uh, agility is clearly needed if we are to comply with the uh, demanding uh, time schedules that have been put in place uh, at uh, EU level. Um, uh, regardless of the short-term efforts to be, to be, to be paid uh, in this uh, context, uh, we cannot forget uh, nor uh, neglect the long-term effort with uh, regard to the uh, reinforcement of energy skills in school curricula, uh, apprenticeships uh, or uh, secondary level education and uh, primary education. This is the long-term perspective that has also to be addressed in this, in this uh, context. Um, uh, we have also been talking about it. Uh, quality assurance mechanisms are essential. Uh, more uh, details are given in the uh, document, but in this, uh, but in this case, as, has, as, as, it, as it has been uh, also uh, stated by uh, the uh, representatives from the uh, manufacturing uh, sector, this kind of quality uh, assurance will pave the way for a more widespread deployment of these uh, technologies and this professional uh, throughout the uh, EU. Um, uh, I have not been uh, mentioning so so far the importance that uh, the public sector plays in this in these uh, contents. Uh, uh, since they are uh, launching customers, they also account for a, a huge amount of uh, uh, contracting uh, throughout the uh, EU. Uh, approximately 18% of all uh, procurement is dealt with by the uh, public sector. Uh, if they, uh, if the uh, public sector uh, undertakes to uh, deploy more stricter uh, solvency and, uh, and, and the implementation criteria in uh, public bids, it will also facilitate the uh, emergence of these advanced uh, solutions and the qualified professionals uh, needed to uh, cope with it. Uh, Energy advice and energy renovation. It has been also uh, noted by uh, our colleague uh, Megan. Uh, it is crucial, uh, again, uh, uh, so, so as uh, end users and also, and also uh, professional at the bottom end of this value, value chain can be familiarized with the opportunities, with training and uh, service uh, opportunity that can be uh, uh, paid by these by these uh, contents. In this, in this sense, uh, training and signposting to certify trusted uh, professionals, we, we will be uh, playing also a, a crucial uh, role. The last two recommendations are uh, to reinforce and provide a specific visibility and prioritization of energy uh, rehabilitation and uh, education and training 
uh, within the structural funds. There is a huge amount of funds at EU level which can be uh, easily channelized through uh, the uh, commitment of these uh, ambitious targets. And, uh, and it uh, has to be streamlined one way or uh, another. And of course, and, and also it has also been uh, addressed both by Dan and also by the European uh, Commission, um, reinforce coordination mechanisms such as the Hate People Accelerator or uh, EU-wide public-private partnership. It is necessary. We have also been uh, talking about the uh, efforts paid by the uh, private sector, uh, for instance, the uh, manufacturers' uh, sectors in education at, and uh, training, and this has to be matched by a, a similar effort in the uh, public sector. So this is, this, these are the uh, 11 recommendations we have identified. More uh, details on the uh, implementation pathways of every one uh, is uh, provided for in uh, the document. Uh, and and uh, again, uh, we will be more than pleased uh, of uh, receiving any feedback from uh, your side. Thank you so much. Mariana. Okay, sorry. Huh? Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I forgot. Sorry, I forgot the last, the last two, two ones. Yeah, uh, these, these are just uh, two uh, short slides uh, regarding the uh, preferred or the proposed uh, implementation level. Uh, it is also uh, addressed in the uh, document, uh, but as, as you can see, uh, in, in most, in most uh, cases, a, a coordinated approach is uh, uh, needed. In other uh, cases, since the competencies are born at specific regional or uh, state level, this is the, uh, the uh, implementation level that has to be uh, adopted. And uh, in many cases, uh, uh, every uh, uh, administrative level will not have to work on its own. It is needed a strong collaboration, as I mentioned in the in the last uh, in the in the uh, last recommendation. Regardless of the uh, competencies that uh, can be uh, born at every level, this kind of uh, coordination is also uh, needed. Okay, I think now now is now is the last one. No, <laughs> I know I'm mistaken. Thanks. Okay, Mariana. Thank you very much, uh, Carlos. Uh, as I was uh, saying before, uh, if there is any question, let's go ahead uh, as we did uh, in the first uh, session. Maybe there's some question here on site that you would like to uh, ask to any of the speakers of this uh, session. If there is a question you would like to ask, if not, uh, we will try to see if uh, there's anyone connected online raising their hands uh, to ask a question. Uh, let me check for that. And uh, I will uh, try to um, give you the floor if that's the case. Uh, let me check if we have uh, online a question uh, for our speakers. It doesn't seem so. Uh, anyway, as uh, we repeated several times during this session, uh, I will give you uh, here on the next slide the contact details for the project. You have over there our social media channels. You can follow them. And there you have as well the website address. On the website, you will find all the resources we've seen today on the event, but you can also contact us because there's a, a specific uh, tab on the website uh, with uh, the contact details. So don't hesitate to address any questions you have. Uh, obviously, uh, Dan uh, launched this invitation to sign this mutual recognition uh, agreement. So please contact us uh, to do so. Um, and uh, finally, to close uh, this event, uh, first, a thank you from my side. But uh, we have a few words from uh, Patrick O'Reilly, our project coordinator, that I insert, and uh, he will like to say something more interesting than me. So please, uh, go ahead. That's, that would be hard now. Um, just a few words to, to wrap it up. Um, this project, I suppose, its ambition was to support uh, an industry that's expanding. Um, as, and as we've seen, it continues to expand even more than we ever thought it would. Um, this was done 
I suppose initially the, the, the focus is on supporting people who are deciding to invest in a heat pump. So building owners, company owners, people who are going to use heat pumps. Um, the training framework is focused more at the value chain, at the designers, but the manufacturers as well. It's intended to support manufacturers to 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 see what the situation is in each marketplace with regard to installers and designers and maybe tail, dovetail these efforts with, with the efforts of manufacturers. Um, and ultimately then, as Carlos has just shown us, to come to some policy recommendations. Um, which And all of this has been achieved through, I suppose, intensive interactions with people on the ground in the in the three pilot regions to see to listen to to their perspectives to 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 gain insight from their their um, experiences of best practice um, their experience of current policies and um, support mechanisms that are in place and to try and put together a, as best we could an overall picture and you know I suppose to to humbly suggest training measures and policy measures that may may help support the entire industry um, as, as it grows. So just to, to finalize, I, I'd like to really thank everyone for attending today and everyone who's here. It's great to see everyone that's in the room and those of you who have taken time online to join us, thank you very much. Um, to the organizers, to Marianne and her team in CTA and uh, also to Carlos and his team for organizing the event. Um, to our project officer, Luca Angelino, for your ongoing support. Um, and guidance. Thank you for that. Um, and lastly, I suppose to the project team, to the consortium, it has been a great pleasure to to, to lead you through this project. Um, it has, you know, everyone has really made huge contributions in your own ways, um, and it has been very great pleasure to work with you all. So, thanks very much.